Viewers, welcome to a late night, a late night Bible study, a late night Bible study. You see, the Bible tells us to meditate on the word both day and night, day and night. So we're here tonight to meditate on the word. Welcome back to Study with Grace. This is a Bible study ministry. This is a Bible study institution. This is a Bible study that's for the body of Christ to, to edify the body of Christ, to exhort the body of Christ with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our Bible study ministry viewers is rooted in, is rooted in studying the scriptures. And that's found in 2 Timothy 2 and 15. It's found in 2 Timothy 2 and 15 to study the scriptures and and in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, it says, study to show ourselves approved unto God. Be a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So our Bible study ministry viewers, it's, it's interlocked, it's interlaced, gorilla glued in studying the scriptures. This ministry is for the body of Christ. All right. Uh, the, the, the error that I see and the error that I get a lot of times um, from a lot of Christians is the lack of studying, the lack of studying the scriptures. Sometimes we just read the Bible and take it for face value. No, the Bible tells us God Almighty tells us he commands us actually to, to toil in our studies, to labor. OK, because he is telling us something amazing in his word. So our Bible study ministry is rooted in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, okay? And it's built upon, it's built upon the gospel, all right? So tonight, we're going to talk about, just real quickly, we're going to talk about Jesus DBR. Jesus DBR. We're going to talk about Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. That's what we're going to talk about tonight, okay? We're going to talk about Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection is what saved our soul. And Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection is, is the foundation in which our Bible study ministry is built upon. Our Bible study ministry is built upon the foundation of the gospel of grace. Okay? is built upon the gospel of grace. And this gospel of grace is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. <laughs> oh, man. It's found in your KJV Bible, actually, or any other Bible. And... This is the gospel that saved your soul. This is the gospel that, that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in his wise counsel, it shows how he reconciled the world back to himself, those who will believe. You see that? It shows his handiwork. It shows his redemptive plan to, to get the sinner back over into grace. OK, this is what the gospel is about. The Bible tells us how that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. All right. Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible teaches. That Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Now. It's so important to understand the death of Jesus Christ, okay? Because without the death of Jesus Christ, there's no blood atonement, okay? So when, when, when you're speaking about our Savior, Jesus Christ, you, you got to be very clear on what Jesus did for sin. And what Jesus did for sin, he did something that you and I could never do. He died for it. So the gospel which is the gospel of grace, by the way. This gospel is the gospel of grace. 
tells us how that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So how did Jesus Christ die according to the scriptures? You see, you, you have to get this understanding because if you don't get this understanding, you will possibly be believing in vain. And we don't want you believing in vain here at Study with Grace. No, -uh. we want you to trust the gospel. We want you to trust the true, authentic, unadulterated gospel, the gospel that saved your soul, that seals you with the spirit. This is the only gospel, the only gospel that saves today. And my brothers and sisters, viewers, time is running out. Time is running out. You see what's going on in the Middle East. You see what's going on with Hamas and Israel. You see all these different things happening. Time is running out. You got to trust the gospel. And it tells us how that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now, so now we know why Jesus died. We know why Jesus died is because of sin, right? So Jesus Christ died because of sin, because of sin, right? And how did he die? According to the scriptures, how did he die? He shed his blood. Jesus Christ died for our sins. And how did he die? Oh my, he shed his blood. The Bible says that there is no atonement without the shedding of blood. And Jesus Christ emptied himself, came from glory, walked the planet in the likeness of sinful flesh, became a man and Walk the walk. You and I can never walk and never will be able to walk. And he walked it perfectly. Never sinned. That means he never lied. He never lust. He never fornicated. He never committed adultery. He never had pride. He was never greedy. He wasn't a glutton. He wasn't none of these things. He was pure without a spot or blemish, the Bible says. So Jesus Christ died for sin. What's sin? A lie. So I'm just going to put a lie here because every single person that watched this video or who doesn't watch this video, every single person in the world who has ever been born has told a lie, has told a lie. And the Bible says that no liar, no liar will inherit the kingdom of God. No liar will inherit the kingdom of God. If you're a liar, you will never, ever inherit the kingdom of God. Nope, you won't. No liar will inherit the kingdom of God, according to the scriptures. So it's so necessary for, for Jesus Christ to shed his blood because his blood atones for the lie that you told. His blood, watch this, not only forgives the lie, right, because you can... You can forgive somebody, right? But it don't change the fact that you've done the action. You see what I'm saying? Like, I can punch you and you can say, you know what, Alandon, hey, I forgive you. But it don't change the fact that Alandon punched you. I'm still guilty of punching you. So I can be forgiven of, of, of me punching you, but it don't erase it that I've done it. Okay? So the Bible says that no liar will inherit the kingdom of God, right? So we need something just a little bit more, more, more potent than I forgive you when it comes to inheriting the kingdom of God. And this potency that's more potent than just a mere I forgive you rests in the blood of Jesus Christ, okay? So when you accept, when, 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 when you trust the gospel and you accept the blood of Christ, Jesus Christ's blood doesn't just forgive you, it atones for you. That means that that lie you told, it, watch this, it get blotted clean. It get blotted clean as if you never lied. Jesus Christ's blood is so potent that when the Holy Spirit, according to Titus 3 and 5, washes you and, 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 and he regenerates you, it's as if you've never lied. You see what I'm saying? That's how potent the blood of Christ is. This is God's blood we're talking about. In the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, the Bible says that God purchased us with his own blood. God purchased us with his own 
blood. It tells us that in Acts 20 and 28. So when you think of the blood of Christ, don't let's get out of our carnal mind. Right. And let's really understand the potency and what the blood really do. Right. So the Bible says that on the gospel of grace, which is found in one Corinthians chapter 15, verses one through four. And this is the only gospel that saves today. This is the only gospel that saves today. Right. And it tells us how that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And how did Jesus Christ die? He shed his blood. This is why, according to Romans 3 and 25, the Bible tells us, according to Romans 3 and 25, to put our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. All right? So, we got to, you got to understand this. The Bible tells us to put our faith in the blood. We are told, according to Romans three and a quarter, to put our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans three and a quarter how Jesus Christ took the propitiation of the wrath of God. Jesus Christ took the propitiation on the wrath of God on our behalf. You see what I'm saying? So he did this right here. And the first on the first part of the gospel, how that Jesus Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, Jesus Christ took the whole punishment of, of, of sin, took the whole propitiation of the wrath of God on himself, physically on his body, flesh. On our behalf, he shed his blood for many, for all sin. But this, but this payment, this blood payment isn't imputed onto you until you put your faith to activate it. In order for the blood of Christ to be imputed onto you, in order for the blood of Christ to wash clean your sins, in order for the blood of Christ to regenerate you, in order for the blood of Christ to, watch this, destroy the works of the devil with, the, with your testimony of the gospel, in order for the blood of Christ to be activated on your behalf, you must believe, believe that you trust Jesus Christ with your heart. You, you got to listen. You have to believe this, that you are a sinner and you were serving Satan because you are a liar like me. We all are liars. We all lust. We all do, you know, back pocket things. We all done things that were contrary to God. But glory be to Jesus Christ, because when you trust the gospel, Jesus Christ, when, when you when you come to the throne of grace with humility and recognize and say, you know what, Father, I, I need your son, Jesus Christ. I, I can't get here without him. I, he saved me. When you come and you put your trust in the blood of Christ, when you put your faith in the blood of Christ. You see that? Oh, man, some divine happens. Something divine happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Romans three and a quarter. <laughs> so the blood of Christ is what is what destroys the works of Satan. When when Jesus Christ spilled his blood and he rose from the dead, he the Bible say he stood openly and, and triumphed over the principalities and darkness. The blood of Christ. Jesus Christ died for our sins, y'all, according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ hung, bled, died, buried and rose on the third day, according to the scriptures, for our sins. They flogged him. They, they, they beat him. They chastened him. They chastised. Where I'm from, we call them chastised. 
They chastised them where I'm from. They stoned them. They kicked them. They spat on them. Jesus Christ got cut up. All for us. All for us. That's, that's called love. Jesus Christ demonstrated his love for us on the cross. He did not have to do this. Jesus Christ was innocent and perfect. He did not have to save you. He would have been just fine. He could have went back to the Father and have been straight. He had to worry about none of that. Oh, but his great love. Jesus says, nobody take my life from me. Nobody. You don't have the authority to take my life. Jesus talking, saying this talk as a man. You can't take my life from me. Don't even try. Nobody can take my life from me, but I lay it down on my own accord, and then I have the power to raise it up again. Jesus Christ shed his blood. And without Jesus Christ's bloodshed, we are all in darkness. We're all in darkness because we are we are drowning. We are, we'll be drowning in darkness. And darkness is Satan's territory. But glory be to Jesus Christ. Because when he when he shed his blood and you and you accepted the blood payment on your behalf, how do you accept the blood payment of Christ? By believing only faith alone, nothing else. Faith alone. You can't add nothing to this. If you add something to this, it's no longer faith alone. It's no longer faith alone. You cannot add anything to this. It's only the works of Jesus Christ. Only the works. Then the Bible says, in this gospel that saves, and the only gospel that saves today, the Bible says that Jesus Christ was buried. Jesus Christ was buried in a tomb, y'all. Our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, was buried. So he died for sins, according to the scriptures. And then when he died, he went straight to the grave. He went straight to the tomb. He went straight to the tomb, y'all. After he shed his blood, he went straight to the tomb. And the grave of Jesus Christ, which is the tomb, is the key witness of his death and the resurrection. The death of Jesus Christ is the key witness of his death and resurrection. The Bible says when Jesus Christ, when he died, Jews start being raised up from the dead, from their grave. When Jesus Christ died, went to the grave. Are you aware of this? You better not never leave out, ever leave out the burial of the gospel. Or you will be believing in vain. You will be believing in vain. Jesus Christ shed his blood on our behalf according to the scriptures. He, he got on that cross and, and got pierced in the hands and pierced in the feet. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine crossing your feet, putting your feet together? And somebody taking a nail about this alone and just hammering it in your in your foot. Taking your arms, stretching it out, and, and hammering nails in your hand through your bones. Taking a spear and, and gutting them in the side. The Bible says Jesus Christ was beaten so severely that you couldn't even recognize him. And he was innocent, y'all. He was innocent. He didn't do nothing. That lets me know that I can walk this planet doing everything right. Being full of love, speaking all truth like Jesus Christ, and people still going to hate me to death. Stop trying to be the best you can be, but allow the blood of Christ Trust in the blood of Christ. That's how you be the best you can be. Jesus Christ followed the laws perfectly, and yet he still had to get on that cross and die 
Now, he didn't have to. He chose to lay his life down for us, y'all. For us. Jesus Christ took the propitiation of the wrath of God. Of the wrath of God. And without Jesus Christ, we have no life. We'll still be in darkness. But glory be to Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ, watch what he did. This is what he did. Jesus Christ, when you accept the gospel, you have now been what's called translated. You've been translated from darkness, watch this, into the light. And that light is Jesus' kingdom. When you accept the when you when you accept the gospel, you no longer walk in darkness, viewers. When you accept the true gospel, you know your your motive your motives change, your 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 why change. Oh, when the gospel get a hold to you, when the resurrection power get a hold to you, your your compass start changing its radius. Now you want to preach Christ crucified. You're not preaching for money. You don't care about no money. You're here to tell folks Christ crucified for your sins. And if you don't believe this, hear me. You're going to find your face right in hell. You're going to be right in hell, bow guarding, trespassing in an area, in a terrain that was originally prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell wasn't prepared for you. The Bible says that it pleased God to crush his own son. The Bible says that it pleased God to crush his own son. This is why you got a 2 Timothy 2 and 15, ladies and gentlemen. You got to study the scriptures. It's so important that you preach the gospel because if you don't put your faith in the blood of Christ, ain't nothing you can do. Nothing you can do to obtain the kingdom of God. You'll be climbing a sandy rope on your way to heaven, trying to get there. Your rope is very sandy, and you just climb in this sandy rope all the way to nowhere. It's not your efforts. It's not your works. It's the works and only work of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the work you must work, according to the book of John, is to believe. Only believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And when you believe in the Lord, when you believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, watch this. It produces righteous works. It makes you want to walk holy. It makes you want to do what's right. Be kind to one another. Love. Have patience. Have self-control. Out of nowhere, you see anxiety start dissing up here. Depression start dissing up here. Why? Because of the resurrection power is now indwelling in you because you trusted in the blood of Christ. You put your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. No longer are you are you worrying about every 31 days. You know who missed that 31 is. You no longer worrying about 31 days every 31 days or some months every 30 days. You know who Mr. 30 and Mr. 31 is. You, you, you're done worrying. You're no longer suicidal. You're no longer full of depression because the resurrection power of Jesus Christ have came in and dwelled in you and reminds you of the truth of the gospel that, hey, one day when it's all said and done, you're going to be removed from the very presence of sin. <laughs> Ah, glory be to Jesus Christ. The gospel says his death and his burial. His burial is the key witness of his death and his resurrection. You see what I'm saying? When, when Jesus Christ was in the tomb, when he was buried, if you understand the culture, you, you'll truly understand what I'm getting ready to tell you. So you got to go back and understand the culture. Back in those days, the, the, the kings used to, you know, when they sit down and eat, their lunch or their dinner, whatever it is that they're eating, 
when they have to get up and go to the bathroom, they'll they'll take their napkin and they'll take their napkin like this and they'll fold it and they lay it on the table. When they take their napkin and they fold it and they lay it on the table, this indicates that I'm not done with my food. I'll be right back. Don't put my plate up. I'm coming back. So the kings during that time, they would take a, a napkin, a cloth, and they would fold it to, sh- to let the people know that I'm coming back. Isn't it ironic that when the disciples went inside the tomb of Jesus Christ, they saw the sheet on one side that he was covered in, and they saw another one folded on the other end? The tomb shows you. Jesus Christ is talking to us via the tomb. I'm coming back. Do your research and study that, viewers. I'm coming back. But watch this. The Bible says also in this gospel of grace, how Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Then he was buried. And then it says something amazing. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, here it is, viewers, rose from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures. Now, Alanda, why is it so important? Why is it so important? I'm going to tell you why it's important. I'm going to tell you why it's important. The Bible says that according to 1 Corinthians, let me just write it down so you can have it. You can take a screenshot of the board. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 17, you've probably never heard this before. Your pastor needs to be teaching you Christ crucified every single day, over and over. Every Sunday, he needs to remind his congregation of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because this is the only gospel that saved your soul. May we never stop teaching and preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, ever. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17, the Bible says, if Jesus Christ, hear me now, if Jesus Christ does not raise from the dead. Listen to me. If Jesus Christ do not raise from the dead, that's that's after the bloodshed, that's after the burial. If Jesus Christ do not raise from the dead, the Bible says that, watch this. Our faith is in vain. And we are still in our sins. We are still sinners if Jesus Christ do not raise from the dead. Are you aware of this? Are you aware of this? If Jesus Christ do not come up, come up out the grave on the third day, according to the scriptures, on his own power, by the way, because he said, I. No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down on my own accord and I got and I have the power to raise it up again. So if Jesus Christ don't raise himself up from the dead. Even after the bloodshed, the Bible says that all this stuff we're doing, all this faith stuff we're doing is worthless and we're still in our sins. You see that? So. Don't just walk around telling people, oh, Jesus Christ died for my sins. You got to complete the entire gospel. You got to tell them the entire gospel, which is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. This is the only gospel that says today. And the Apostle Paul says that if anybody. Here it is, viewers. Viewers, here it is. If anybody. Including angels, if anybody, including angels from heaven, anybody, come and preach a different gospel, including angels, guess what? 
let them be accursed. If anybody preach something other than the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as the gospel that saves today, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, the Bible says that let any one of them folks be accursed, including angels. This is according to the scriptures. <laughs> this is the gospel we preach. This is the gospel we teach. And this is the gospel that save our souls. Keep your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone, according to the scriptures. Until next time.